Yes, welcome my friends to the basement. Lamar Apocalypse, it is upon us. We're blowing out the format. <laughs> We're changing up the format. It's all Lamar. We're just gonna get right into it. I'm gonna waste as little time as I possibly can. I just also have to tell you that we're talking about my favorite ever fitness product that somehow has to do with Lamar as well. We're gonna get into that. And Family Confessional. We're gonna take a quick break from Lamar to talk about this stupid stuff that you, I, we have all done with our family. You call, you leave messages, you confess. It's great. You guys always bring it with that. It is really good. But it is Lamar Apocalypse. That's a negative way of looking at it. Is there a positive way? We'll try to find it. We're going to start with what I hate today, what I hate, what I love, and what's hilarious. Come on now. All right, so let's get into it. We had a, uh, the uh, equivalent of the mushroom cloud this afternoon in the football world when out of nowhere, after a couple of weeks and really a couple of months and a couple of years of unusual here or there, sometimes eccentric Lamar tweets, he just straight up comes out with this, with a letter, as he put it to the fans. And we're not even gonna read through the whole thing. The basically is like, I love you all, I appreciate you all. I have requested a trade from the Baltimore Ravens. In fact, I requested a trade weeks ago from the Baltimore Ravens. I hate this news for Ravens fans. Let me just take them, the small portion of you that comprise Ravens fans that are listening right now. This sucks. This is really happening. It is a nightmare car accident in slow motion in which the most exciting player in the league, who is on your team, is now officially saying, I want the hell out of here. Get me off the team. All these visions you have of more Lamar for years to come. Lamar winning the big one. Lamar raising the Lombardi. I don't know if it's going to happen. I can't say it's not going to happen, but I don't know if it is anymore. And for his part, Lamar does not want to be a Raven anymore. This is very much like Rodgers coming out and saying, I would like to play for the New York Jets. And it is Lamar saying, I have asked the Ravens to trade me. I asked them weeks ago. Uh, and the reason I say I hate this is because it is the equivalent of a football shame. Lamar Jackson should be a Raven. He should always be a Raven. He's one of the great Ravens. He has a chance to be the greatest ever Raven in a class that includes some absolute legends. I, I submit this to you. I think that if you were to go to all 32 NFL stadiums on one of their home games in the middle of the regular season and the playoffs or wherever, I don't know if you'll see a player who occupies a greater percentage of the jerseys in the stands than Lamar at a Ravens game. I think he would be number one. Because even people like Mahomes... You're going to get your Kelsey jerseys. You're going to get some other ones, sure. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, there's a lot of Josh Allen jerseys. There's Diggs. There's a lot of other players, the historical ones. I think if you go to a Baltimore Ravens game on Sunday, Monday night, Thursday night, whenever it may be, I think the number eight jerseys in the crowd are the highest percentage of any player in the league. They love that guy there. And, and there's, there's few players in the league that represent so much more than just, I'm the quarterback. I, I am the franchise quarterback. No, he is the face of the team, he is the face of the organization, he is the face of the city, he is the face of the state of Maryland. That's the guy. And now he wants to leave it. It sucks. It shouldn't be like that. And it shouldn't be like that because of money and because of a staring contest and a blinking contest in which Lamar is finally saying, I'm out of here. It's not insignificant either that Lamar is not asking for the trade today. Today, my friends, is the 27th. He says 25 days ago, he went to the Ravens and said, I would like to be traded, which means one of two things has gone down over those 25 days. Either the Ravens have said, that's nice, but we're not going to trade you, or they haven't been able to find any partners whatsoever to trade. Remember now, it has been well over a week and a half that Lamar has been available to be inspected, toured, poked, prodded, wined, dined, you name it, by other teams because of the franchise tag that I put on him. That other team could make an offer that the Baltimore Ravens could match. We've heard nothing. Crickets about a 26 year old MVP just sitting there ready to come into your town. I've seen all the suitors, the landing spot blogs that you click on because you're bored. Atlanta, Indianapolis, they're all over the map. Nothing. People got money, people got draft picks, people got a fan base, people got a business, people got all kinds of things to go get Lamar, and it has not happened. It hasn't happened since that two Thursdays ago when it became available for it to be checked out, and apparently it hasn't happened since March 2nd when Lamar went to ownership of the Ravens and said, I would like a trade. 
Now, there much has been said, much ink has been spilled about Lamar not having an agent. Uh, he may not have an agent, but either has a publicist or he has a watch which tells what time it is because he was a sniper. The most precise pass he has ever thrown, threading the needle of coverage, is dropping these tweets just as John Harbaugh's two butt cheeks sat down to do an extended media session about Lamar, having no idea that Lamar just tweeted that he told the whole world that he has requested a trade. Lamar zipped that pass, and as Harbaugh is sitting down, tweet, microphones on, tape recorder on, Hey guys, what do you want to talk about? Well, did you see the tweet, John? No, I haven't seen squat. What tweet are you talking about? Here is uh, Harbaugh in a meeting when he was given, asked his instant reaction to his franchise quarterback saying he wants to play for another team. I haven't seen the tweet. It's an ongoing process. Uh, I'm, I'm following it very closely, just like everybody else is here, and uh, looking forward to a resolution. I'm excited, thinking about Lamar all the time, thinking about him as our quarterback. We're building our offense around that idea and uh i'm just looking forward to getting back to football i'm confident that's going to happen are you are you <laughs> it's so awkward because harbaugh is very good as a highly experienced head coach who's been around for so long and a really sharp guy it's just getting through the questions but they're like john what do you mean you're confident that's going to happen look he just said he's asking you for a trade and that you guys won't do what he wants, and he wants out of there. And John's just going to the quiver. Every arrow that he can pull out to shoot down those things. Well, you know, Lamar, I'm confident he's going to be here, and Lamar's about football, and Lamar, we love Lamar. You try that route. Uh, the team loves Lamar. I love Lamar. And he's just, and they're just coming in. Yeah, 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 John, John, John. Would you like to refer to this tweet? And he says, well, I haven't seen the tweet. Well, that's no problem, because I got it right here on my phone. I'll read it to you verbatim. And then they do. Because these are at, the, this is at the, the annual meeting in Arizona. There's so many media members there. And you saw the pictures. Normally they're trying to talk to Belichick or whoever the, the hot coaches at that time. The tweet breaks and the, the reporters put down their, their plates of breakfast and scrambled eggs and English muffins and run over to Harbaugh. He was seven deep. You would have thought Lamar himself walked in there. The pictures of them surrounding him, just pelting him with Lamar questions. If Lamar did that on purpose, and I have to think he did, there's a wild coincidence to tweet that right then. I mean, he really put Harbaugh on a corner, and he was trying to defend himself. He was trying to slip punches like Ali, and a tough corner to fight your way out of. He did the best he possibly could. We love Lamar. I expect Lamar to be here. Do you expect uh, Lamar to be your starter day one? I do. Yeah, but based on what? This is, you guys can't pay him what he wants, or you don't want to pay him what he wants. He says he wants off the team, John. You may be coaching against him next year. Crazy, crazy ongoing. I hate it. I wish Harbaugh was announcing today they've reached an agreement with Lamar and we'll see a week one and let's rock and roll and win a Super Bowl. They're not. Ian Rappaport, meanwhile, is saying, while the trade request has been in since March 2nd, Lamar says, sources say that he was negotiating with the Ravens as recently as last week. Well, great. I mean, he's been negotiating with the Ravens as recently as... Uh, 2021, but unless someone, someone finally says, you know what? Fine. Fine. Here's your guaranteed. Or if Warren Lamar says, fine, I won't get it guaranteed. We don't even know if we want it, if he wants it guaranteed. We're just guessing. We're just guessing because the fact that it hasn't gotten done tells you he wants some crazy stuff. I retract that. He wants a lot of stuff. Maybe it's not crazy. All right, let's keep moving on. Let's somehow get in this crazy world. I keep saying crazy. It is a little crazy. Let's get to what I love, which we usually do first. Today we'll do second. So I hate it for Ravens fans. I really do. It's sad. Shouldn't happen. You got your guy. He's phenomenal talent. Drafted him. Homegrown. Built the team around him. Built the roster. Built the offense. Now he's saying, get me out of here. But I love it for the other teams. Sure. I mean, you hate to see, you know, a guy that you respect and like you get dumped by his wife or his girlfriend or whatever. But shoot, you know, maybe there's some other guys who are good guys have been on the market for a while, a little bit single, and they would make a good couple. Pretty exciting. Isn't it exciting to be a fan of a team that lands in the blogs that say potential Lamar Jackson landing spots? 
And you're like, man, I've been a season ticket holder for 26 years. And if I could just go up on Sunday and I could buy my Lamar Jackson jersey and bring my kid and oh my God, that'd be amazing. It is really exciting. It really is. You know, I keep saying Indianapolis, we'll see. Atlanta, maybe. And there's just wild ones. You know, Carolina has the number one overall pick. Would they do something just really outside the box? And their owner, David Tepper, who has brass cojones on his desk, literally has them. Would he trade it to get Lamar? And then the Ravens would have the number one overall pick. It's just also fun to think about. It's fun to think about that good of a player, that exciting of a player changing teams and the Ravens finally saying, this is a dark day for organization. We tried everything we possibly could, but in the end, we just couldn't match Lamar's terms and we find them unreasonable. And then the Ravens Twitter account tweets out this, thanks for the memories. We'll always remember you LJ8. And they do this dumb you know, video and it's all sappy and he's just gone at 26, gone. <laughs> it's intoxicating to think about. So that could really happen. And I guess we're to the place where we could. But just the idea that's, you know, look, at one point, Peyton Manning was a free agent, late in his career, totally different type of player, different type of stature too, but people were losing their mind. And this is like an older Peyton Manning. And then he finally chooses Denver. Lamar is just so young and he's so, look, flawed, sure. Perfect, definitely not. Just as a fan, so exciting. It's, it's the player that when you're watching the red zone and they go, oh, let's go to Baltimore. Look at what Lamar Jackson's done. That's your player and your kid has that jersey. It's just, it's great. Especially for teams like Indianapolis who have basically become the senior tour of quarterbacks and they just sign anybody who's washed up and wants one more year, one more paycheck. It doesn't work out ever. And they've just been in this chasing their tail syndrome since Andrew Luck retired right before the regular season started. For Andrew, for the, the Colts to get Lamar Jackson would be amazing. Or Atlanta, who's had this history where they've got these exciting luminaries and, and, and Dion and Vic and like Lamar would be represent that next rock star in Atlanta. It's just cool. It's very cool. Whoever he goes would be cool. I just still think at this point, remember, he doesn't have to go anywhere. They don't have to trade him. Maybe that's nice. He requested a trade. Well, we have tagged you and we're going to pay you this much money. So if you don't want to show up, we're just going to sit this thing out. We're just going to sit it out. We're going to roll it through the summer into September into August. I just think it would absolutely be a disaster for the Baltimore Ravens to announce to their fans that they traded Lamar Jackson. But man, it would be a party for whoever else. The Commanders, would they do that? Would you want that? Here's a question. You're a fan of a team that's in, this, in the market for Lamar Jackson. Do you flat out definitely want him? Is it just cut and dry? Hell yes, I want him. Because you know the Knox, it's going to be very expensive to trade for him. It's going to be incredibly expensive to pay him. There's the injury stuff. There's the missed game stuff. There's the running quarter. I mean, it's, it's not as if you're trading for Mahomes and you're just like, hell yes, perfect player. Not a perfect player. It's a really exciting player. And there's a really high-end player. Not perfect. And you'd have to pay perfect player price. What a, what a, what a story. And it's not going anywhere. But this is a big chapter in it. I, I feel like if you're one of these teams that have had hopes and dreams and delusions maybe of getting Lamar, today was a big day for you because he's asking off the Ravens. What if the Jets pivot and get him? <laughs> what if they say, the Packers aren't budging, screw them, let's go way younger than Rodgers and let's get Lamar. I don't know. It's all, it's all open now. It's all available. I just hope Lamar is staying in really good shape. You better believe in the What's Hilarious segment. I've got something that's going to help him do that. I've been waiting to get to this since last week. Let's get to What's Hilarious. It's more Lamar. Well, apparently Lamar's been in the gym. In fact, he's been in the entire gym. What's the entire gym? It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Understood as I, I was classically raised on the Solo Flex, the Nordic Flex Gold, the late night infomercial fitness product featuring anybody from Tony Little to Body by Jake, fitness model John Bass Dow with the crazy abs and the perfect dry do perm. Just awesome. I love fitness products. I bought some of them. My dad used to buy all of them back in the early 90s. And so in the midst of all this uncertainty about his career and Lamar going on Twitter here and then to say, no, that's not the case or this is the case, whatever it may be, he comes out and he tweets basically a DIY infomercial for 
a fitness product that he is endorsing and apparently invested in. I want you to remember, this is an NFL MVP angling for about a quarter billion dollars contract. This is the product that he says, by the way, as long as y'all are here, check this out. This is the entire gym. Combining outdoor training and a portable gym maximizes time and workout routines. With over 250 plus workout routines, the entire gym brings you the flexibility to work out anywhere, anytime. That's the entire gym. And people are mocking it and people are making fun of it. I want it. I want this thing so bad. I want the flexibility to be able to work out anywhere, anytime, all right? I wanna maximize my time and my workout routines. I wanna do over 250 routines. I'm looking at Lamar and I'm looking at this, uh, the female fitness model they have in there. They're getting after it. Lamar, NFL MVP, 26 years old, on a, what looks to be a high school field with some screw-on dumbbells. And the entire gym is like a, kind of like a roller bag. It appears that there's, a, if you're trying to fit the entire gym into one little chassis, I don't know if I would have allocated as much real estate to the speaker system on the entire gym, but I'm not a gym creator. I don't know. Someone might say, well, you have a whole thing where like you got some workout bands and a yoga mat and a speaker and iPad. Maybe you just throw it in a duffel bag for $40 instead of buying the entire gym. To them, I say short-sighted. I'm being completely serious and I'm speaking to the entire gym people. I'm speaking to Lamar Jackson. I want the entire gym. I want it. And if you were to send me one, I don't need any money. I don't need any stock. I don't need any equity. I just want to try it. I want to do an unboxing. I want to get a workout. And I am coming from a good place. I, I want to try it. I'm a guy who's getting a little bit older. I'm trying to stay in shape. I got kids. I got a job. I need the flexibility to get my workout anytime I want. I want to do those bicycle kicks that Lamar is doing. The, 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 the woman who's doing this, I want to do it. In fact, let's go to the sky cam. I got a space right here, all right? This is a little gym space, and it's got limited space, so that's perfect for the entire gym. I can't have an actual gym. I want the entire gym. I have a bike here, but right here in the basement and on Kyle Brandt's basement, if you will just send me an entire gym, I promise I will give it a fair analysis, evaluation, I will do the workouts, I will use what looks to be a tablet, I will use the sound system, we will do it here on the show, and I will unbox it, I will show the pieces, and I think there's a lot of people who are mocking it, who are taking shots at it, I promise I will be fair, and I will stay positive and constructive. I, as I said, classically trained on the home fitness workout routines, I, in my life, I work with a professional trainer twice a week, I feel like I know what I'm talking about, I'm an ex-athlete, I will give it a fair shot. I'm gonna do it right here, and if I'm gonna be on the ground, and I'm gonna be with Lamar doing the bicycle kicks like that, or I'm gonna be doing these things, or on the yoga mat, whatever, I will get after it, and I will give you my recommendation, or maybe my notes, my thoughts, but I promise I will do it constructively and positively. I'm not here to tear you down. Let's go back to home base. I just think there's something that's incredible about that that Lamar th is throwing in with that, while his career is at this major crossroads and you're like, wow, should we pay a quarter billion dollars for Lamar as he's staying in shape? You're damn right he is. He's got the entire gym. Not part of the gym. It's the entire gym right there. Guys, they promise 250 routines and it's mobile. It's got those little wheels on it. It's got a big old handle, music, visual. Um, we discovered this last week and Lamar tweeted it. And everyone I was working with was kind of just laughing about it for some reason. And you know what? Those people are going to be out of shape. Those people are not committed to their health and fitness. Those people don't want the flexibility to do their health and fitness routines wherever they want. I do. One last time. And I'm not doing shtick and I'm being dead serious. I like the, the entire gym product. I know it says it's hilarious. Ignore that. I think the reaction to it and the phenomenon around it is entertaining. But I promise me, send me an entire gym. We, we can hook up. You can contact the show. I will give it a fair analysis. I'm in. I want to try this thing so bad. I've got a lot of those products. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. 
you know, my parents used to have the Thighmaster. My dad had a Nordic Flex Gold. It was the Nordic Flex painted gold like a Zelda cartridge. I used to work out on that thing. I want the entire gym. Not half of it, not a quarter of it. The entire thing. If it's good enough for Lamar, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for Kyle Brand's basement. I promise I will come from a good place. I can only say it so many times. Can you please send us the entire gym? We're gonna put this out on social. You people, you entrepreneurs. What was the guy's name? Ken Francis. Ken, I understand you're from the Daytona Beach area. I went there for spring break in 1997, had a great time. Drove a dune buggy on the beach. Respect the Daytona Beach community. <laughs> I'm into it. I wanna help you. I promise I, I, I'm, I'm not messing with you. Send me the entire gym. That's it. Um, we gotta get to this. Maybe this, what I just said, will be part of my contribution to this segment at some point. But we do a segment here where we own up to the things that we made missteps on with our family, our kids, our parents, or whatever. And it's a place of healing, and it's called Family Confessional. Looking to reduce the fees for your restaurant deliveries? Dash Pass by DoorDash is the easiest way to unlock savings on your latest cravings on every eligible order. Dash Pass is a membership from DoorDash that offers unlimited $0 delivery fees from thousands of eligible restaurants, grocery stores, and convenience stores. Once you join, you'll save on each eligible order and receive DoorDash credits back on all pickup orders. That means more money back in your wallet. It's not just savings on restaurant deliveries, flowers, pet supplies, groceries. Dash Pass has so much more to save on than just your favorite meals. Get what you want, when you need it, without any upfront commitments. You'll have the ability to cancel your membership at any time with no hidden or additional fees. Get 50% off up to a $20 value on your next Dash Pass order when you sign up for a membership and redeem Basement at checkout. That's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to a $20 value with Basement. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more because you can. Start your free month trial today. All right, here we go. You guys call, we have an answering machine down here. We check it, it's got actual tape in it. You leave a voicemail. There's an outgoing message from me, 2524 Brants. 252, the number four Brants. You can call it right now. And you'll hear me saying, hey, thanks for calling the basement. But in this particular case, we're like, look, what if you guys messed up really badly? What if you're just like, man, you won't believe what I did. You know, I lied to my kid or I played a trick on my wife or vice versa. Call in, confess, I'll give you my thoughts. Maybe I'll tell you it's not so bad. And maybe I'll tell you it's actually terrible. It's worse than you're saying. Three calls today. Let's get to it. I like that most of the calls today, in fact, all of them are unidentified callers. I'll say again for the record, I have not heard these. They are screened by the KBB staff. I have not heard them. I will hear them for the first time with you. First caller on Family Confessional comes with a call from a caller with a Dallas area code. Let's see what they have to confess. Go ahead. Hey, I'm calling for the what does your spouse do that drives you crazy portion of the question. Why does my wife always say that she wants mushroom on top of her pizza and then we get a whole half of a pizza with mushrooms on it. Then when the pizza comes, she say, oh, I'll just grab one piece of pepperoni. Like, no, you taking a piece of pepperoni is deducting from my pepperoni and adding mushrooms to me. Yep. I don't want a mushroom yep. pizza. I want a pepperoni pizza. If I'm going to go to the trouble of eating a pizza and ordering a pizza and getting the calories and all that junk, right. I want it to taste good, not some crummy cheese and mushrooms. So don't eat my pepperoni if you order mushrooms. I respect it. And you know what? If you were to balk at her <laughs> poaching one of your pepperoni slices, and she'll say, you can have one of mine. And you'll say, I don't want that. I, I don't like the mushrooms. You know what she's gonna say? Just pick them off. Just pick them off. To which you say, well then, I'm left with a deformed slice of cheese pizza that has mushroom remnants on it and has no pepperoni on it. So what we're doing here is an exchange for a prime pepperoni slice for the crappiest cheese pizza with little notes of mushroom on it. <laughs> That's not a win at all. I hear you, ma'am. I hear you. Uh, my wife and I don't have that problem. We like the same toppings. And at this point, like I'll pretty much eat anything on a topping. So sometimes she'll do like peppers or mushrooms and 
or just the classics and I get after it. But I think you have a legit beef, so to speak. I, I really do think that she should leave the pepperoni alone because I wondered this, could you call the pizza place and say, could I have five slices of pepperoni and three of mushroom? They would probably do that, right? Because they just put it out there and it's cheese and if they're making it fresh, you could probably distribute the pepperoni so that it's five slices. They might do that. Is it a mom and pop place that you're ordering from? It's an obnoxious order that you'd probably feel embarrassed to do. But that would be really funny for your wife. If you sat down on the coffee table and opened it, and sure enough, there was this majority share of pepperoni with this the three slices of mushroom. Try that next time. That would be my advice. Because then you're getting your full four pep, she gets her pepperoni piece, and then everybody's happy. Try that. If they're a good mom and pop pizza place, I'm sure they'll be like, they probably heard it all before. So that's my advice. That's a good, that's good beef though. Family confessional call number two. Go down to Florida. Oh man, anything's possible down in Florida. A uh, place that super producer Michael Flynn and I both just visited, Orlando, Florida. Unidentified caller wants to confess. What have you got? Hey, KB, thanks uh, for your taking my call. Uh, I, I have something I've got to confess. Uh, it's not a crime that's actually been committed yet, kind of. Um, and, and it may actually be a motive if, if I should end up dead later. So maybe just don't report this so that my wife still gets the insurance money because okay. she's, she's probably in the right. Um, but one of my favorite bands, they're going on their final tour. They're breaking up after a number of years. Okay. And I really wanted to get tickets. My wife and I are also expecting our second child. Um, one of our, our very good mutual friends, um, we, we were planning on meeting up to go to the concert. They were really insistent. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. My wife insisted up and down. No, you're not going. It's, it's going to be probably six weeks or so after the baby comes and she'll be on maternity leave. And, you know, I, I understand, but, uh, I, I, I may have told her that they bought me a ticket. Um, and then she felt compelled of, oh, now they did this for you. Now you have to go. I didn't mention that I paid them mm. back. They just purchased all four tickets. Um, but I'm probably going to get killed for it here shortly. So um, if this is the last call I uh, make to you guys, it's been a pleasure. I hear you. You know, all I was thinking, and I feel like everyone watching is thinking the same thing. Who is the band? Trying, who is the band that's on their final tour? I, I don't even know. Is it like the Chili Peppers or something? They'll never stop. I don't know who it is. You got to bring your wife to that concert, man. She needs to go. She just she's she's gonna come off having the baby, and she wants to get up and out there, and she wants to be part of what you're doing, and she wants to go to the concert. I understand. Like a lot of the concerts, you want to go with the people who are your bros or who really relate to that music. I recently, last year, got tickets to. Uh, Pearl Jam at the Apollo Theater in Harlem, like the iconic theater, and it was really small. It was probably, I don't know, 400 people. It's an un unprecedented for a band of that stature. And I got two tickets, and I'm starting to say, all right, which of my friends am I going to bring? And Brooke was like, no, I want to go. I was like, you, but you don't like really like Pearl Jam. She's like, yeah, I know some of their songs. Yeah. All right, you, you want to go? You want to go? It's the, the point is, it's cool that your wife wants to go with you. And I understand there's only so many of those bro hangs you can have left in life. If she wants to go, she wants to go. And I think it's cool that she wants to go, especially not having a baby. Um, I just want to know who the band is. I guess nobody seems to know. But take her. She'll be fun. She, she's, she's awesome. She's getting over it and getting out. Some, some, there's women who don't want to leave the house for six months after the baby. And they're, they're great too. But if they want to go to the concert, go to the concert. Who is the band? I wish I knew. Last call, North Carolina, unidentified caller. Please confess your sins. Go ahead. Hey, Kyle. Uh, family confession. When I was in the fourth grade, my parents dressed me up as a pimp for Halloween. I have pictures to prove it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That was it. <laughs> I like that caller. His parents dressed him. So, what do you think? Fourth grade. What was the pimp costume? Did you have like Huggy Bear from Starsky and Hutch? Did you have a pimp cup? Did you have like the large feathered hat and the ostentatious suit? <laughs> so fourth grade though, I, my, my son's in third grade. You have a lot of autonomy on what you're going to be for Halloween. 
there's not so much your parents dressing you up anymore, let alone in something you don't want to. It's, this is not like you're a two-year-old and you dress you up as a pumpkin. Fourth grade, you're, you're turning 10 years old. I, I have a feeling maybe you wanted to be the pimp, right? And was there any reaction at the school? Did they not send you home? Because my children's school, they got pretty strict rules. Like you can't even bring in a sword if you're a knight or something like that. You can't bring in blasters if you're a Mandalorian. So can, can you bring in the uh, accoutrements of, of pimping when you're back in the day? You probably could because if judging by the sound of your voice it was kind of a long time ago. Um, I think what you need to confess to is your ownership of that. Did you feel uncomfortable or did you think you were just in a fancy suit or did you know what what it was? Did you know that you were basically selling women's bodies for profit? <laughs> because that's intense if you did. Um, update, we think that maybe the last caller who is going to the, see the farewell tour might be a KISS fan. That's our only guess. They, they are apparently on like their umpteenth farewell tour. But, you know, KISS has a huge family atmosphere at their shows. They got kids, grandkids, all kinds of stuff. Bring the wife. Bring the wife. You know what? Bring the wife. Dress up in a pimp costume when you go there. You'll fit right in. Guys, Family Confession was awesome. I love doing this. I like the pizza call. I think it was my favorite one. I think it was the most relatable. Uh, I didn't dress up as a pimp in fourth grade. I think I dressed up as Joe Montana, which was great. And my friend was Jerry Rice. But in the meantime, uh, always call 252-4-Brant. That's 252, the number four, and Brant... We all do dumb stuff. We all do stuff that's dumb but funny. Kids, parents, in-laws, anything. Call. Confess. I got you guys. Pizza, concert, and pimps. That's a hell of a segment. Let's finish up. Skycam. Dart throwing time. I always finish with one little topic. Topic I don't know is coming. I'll just ad lib it. Whatever number the dart hits, there's a corresponding topic that the staff has come up with. And today's number is right at the top. 20. Topic number 20. How shall I end today's program? And Kyle Brent's basement. Let me see the list. Favorite video game of all time. Oh man, that's a tough one, folks. I'm just gonna start throwing out the candidates. Um, original 8-bit Tecmo Bowl, not the, not the one that came later with the eight plays and Tecmo Super Bowl. I know that's much more popular, but I like the OG. The original Zelda, the second time I've mentioned it on the show, Zelda Ocarina of Time on the N64. It comes down to two. It comes down to, it's definitely on the Nintendo 64 system because that was my college system. I think it comes down to N64 Mario Kart. And you know where I'm going. I already mentioned Ocarina of Time, but I'm going. I think it has to be Goldeneye. I just remember the first time I played that game. I was like, what the hell is this? Greatest thing I've ever seen. You had machine guns and you had sniper rifles and you were, it was just so awesome. I couldn't believe it. I remember I was playing the snow level for the first time and I climbed up in the sniper tower and I zoomed in on this guard with his little crosshairs and just <laughs> pinged him. I was like, wow. And then I missed and he came running at me all awkwardly and I could shoot him in the knees. It's, listen, violent as hell of course, but cartoonish. Um, it has to be Goldeneye. And, and even just the missions itself before you even get into the multiplayer level. Just amazing. All through college, blood was shed you know, amongst from punches uh, of, of rivalries and Goldeneye. I used to play with the helicopter pilot. That was my character. It was this blue, he had this big bug-headed helmet on. I just liked him. Goldeneye, if you know, you know. It's just one of those things. Proximity mines, remote mines with the watch. Beep. You know, I keep going on that. Goldeneye, N64 Goldeneye. The average movie, I think. I, I like uh, Famke Johnson a lot. Excellent, excellent video game. That's it, guys. Excellent show. Weird one today. Family confessional and all Lamar topics and then some Goldeneye, a little dessert at the end. We'll be back tomorrow, I promise. Thank you, love you. Please subscribe, please share, please tweet. It helps keep the lights on down here. In the meantime, exit through the garage, close the door on your way out. See you tomorrow.